Hello my YouTube friends and welcome back to another Generation Behind Hi-Fi video. Today I'm going to be doing a look inside video on this Aoyama 800X compact subwoofer. Hopefully I'm saying the name right. You know, I'm not too familiar with this brand. Aoyama did send this subwoofer to me for review. And just because they sent it to me doesn't mean I'm going to be saying only nice things about it. That's not how this channel operates. So with that being said, you know, this subwoofer retails for just under $200. So you can't be too picky on a budget subwoofer like this. Um, it does have an eight inch driver, has a pretty cool trapezoid cabinet design, has a base, base reflex port over here on the side. And it also includes a hundred watt class D amplifier, which has some pretty cool features, which I'll talk about later. So in this video, I'm going to tear this subwoofer down. We're going to go over the TS parameters of the driver. Then I'm going to take a look at the cabinet construction. And then we're going to take a look at the amplifier. So let's get started. So what do you get for your $196? Well, you get an eight inch driver that has some pretty decent excursion, a 100 watt class D amplifier, and a trapezoidal shaped cabinet. This subwoofer includes high level inputs and is a feature you don't see very often anymore. This subwoofer also includes an auxiliary input that can be used to connect it to a computer if you choose to do so. As for accessories and paperwork, my subwoofer came with an owner's manual, RCA cable, power cable, and even came double boxed, which is nice to see. Sadly, no grill for this subwoofer is included. Now let's get started with the teardown. The amplifier is very easy to remove and is held in by 12 3mm Allen screws. The amplifier being used in the 800X subwoofer is a Class D design. This amplifier features stereo and LFE RCA inputs, phase control, volume control, adjustable crossover from 50 to 250 hertz, and an auxiliary input. What's cool about this subwoofer is it has high level inputs. This allows you to connect the subwoofer to an older receiver or pre-amplifier that does not have a sub out connection. I rarely see high level inputs on budget subwoofers anymore. The amplifier in this subwoofer is based on the Texas Instruments TPA 3116D amplifier module. After reviewing the datasheet for this chip, it has an output rating of 100 watts at 2 ohms. Texas Instruments also claims the signal to noise ratio is 102 dB, which is pretty good. As for the capacitors, they are using brands that I don't recognize. This is pretty typical to find on subwoofers in this price category. To remove the driver, I first need to remove the trim pieces around it. These trim pieces are glued into place and are fairly easy to pry off with a flathead screwdriver. Once I have the trim pried back, it reveals the 8 Allen screws that fasten the driver to the front baffle. I use a 3mm Allen wrench to remove the 8 screws. The driver in the Aoyama 800X subwoofer is pretty decent and utilizes some cool tech that's normally not found on budget subwoofers. This driver is 8 inches in size and utilizes a stamped steel basket. The driver has a large rubber surround and this subwoofer has some pretty good excursion capabilities too. The cone material is made from glass fibers and paper. As for tech, Aoyama is using a couple of design techniques to keep the voice coil cool during those long and loud listening sessions. The first one is by using a vented pole piece. This cools the voice coil indirectly. The second method is by venting the voice coil underneath the spider. To deal with the trapped air behind the dust cap, Aoyama is using a vented bobbin and vented pole piece. This gives the trapped air behind the dust cap a place to vent. The motor assembly is pretty decent too and utilizes a bump plate to give this driver a little more excursion. The motor assembly also has a pretty large ferrite magnet that measures 4 and 1 8 inches in width. Now let's see how much this driver weighs. And it came in at 3 pounds and 11 ounces. 
For comparison, the 8-inch driver for my Bowers & Wilkins ASW608 subwoofer came in at 6 pounds and 5.6 ounces. FYI, the B&W subwoofer is 3 times the cost of the Aoyama subwoofer, and rightly so. The impedance curve for the 800X is pretty smooth. Resonant frequency came in at 40.2 Hz and DC resistance is around 3 ohms. Total Q came in at 0.53 which indicates the driver is decently damped. BL which measures the strength of the motor assembly came in at 7.12 tesla meters which is pretty good for this low price point. Voice coil inductance came in a little high at 1.22 millihenries but isn't terrible. Inductance is one of the main factors that corresponds with distortion so a lower value is always better. Overall a very decent driver for this price point. I really like that Ayama went with a trapezoidal cabinet design because it does have some sonic benefits. Standing waves are created by using a box design that has parallel sides, and by using a trapezoidal design cabinet which has non-parallel sides, this reduces the potential for standing waves. So I definitely like that their engineers were thinking outside the box and decided to use an unconventional box design. However, the construction quality of the cabinet is pretty cheap and in my opinion is not in line with other subwoofers I have seen in this $200 price point. I'm pretty sure that this cabinet is constructed from low density fiberboard instead of the usual medium density fiberboard because the entire subwoofer only weighs 12 and a half pounds. This is by far the lightest $200 subwoofer that I have tested yet. The front baffle is 3 quarters of an inch thick and the rear cabinet wall is a half inch thick. I would assume the sidewalls are also a half inch thick as well but have no way of measuring them. The cabinet doesn't have any internal bracing but does include some damping material that has been positioned on the opposite side of the port. When performing the good old fashioned knock test, you could tell this cabinet likes to sing. This cabinet would benefit tremendously by lining the inside walls with sound deadening material and adding a few braces to help combat cabinet resonances. The port is flared on both ends and during my listening test I didn't hear any port chuffing. The feet on the bottom of the cabinet are made from hard plastic and are not ideal for decoupling the subwoofer from the floor. Appearance wise I really like the look of the cabinet. The finish on the front and rear cabinet walls reminds me a lot of the same finish that Polk uses on their Monitor XT line of speakers. And the wood vinyl wrap looks decent and gives the speaker a more upscale look. Port tuning for this subwoofer came in at 44 Hz. I also noticed a cabinet resonance taking place at around 175 Hz that has enough amplitude where I think it might be audible. I really wanted to like this subwoofer but I think Ayama missed the mark considerably on price in my country. The $200 price point for subwoofers is highly competitive in the United States and to be perfectly frank. I can get a much better subwoofer from a more established brand like Klipsch, Polk, and Sony for similar money. Since I've been in this hobby for a long time, I know which established brands are always running sales, and Klipsch and Polk are two that quickly come to mind. The other issue I had with this subwoofer that I can't overlook is with sound quality. During my listening sessions, there is an audible buzzing sound coming from the subwoofer that can be heard all the time. I don't know what is causing this annoying buzzing noise. It could be a number of things, the cabinet, driver, amplifier, or a combination of all three. Here's a quick sound demo of the buzzing sound that I am hearing. Now let me play that same clip using a Sony subwoofer that I just picked up for $200.
Can you hear the difference? Hopefully I illustrated the buzzing sound clearly with these clips. I can't hear any of the buzzing noises with the Sony subwoofer and yet it's currently the same price. This is just one example of a subwoofer that is better built and has better sound for the same money. I'm not trying to poo poo all over Aoyama because I do welcome more competition, but in my opinion they really need to study the build quality and performance from other brands that are offered here in the United States if they want to be competitive. I really like the design of the 800X and the 8 inch driver that they are using has potential, but the buzzing sound is something I can't overlook. If Aoyama wants to stand out in the American market, they really have to be doing it better than the competition. I hope Aoyama can resolve these issues with their new subwoofer because I do like the concept that they presented. It just needs more polishing before I would consider one. I truly do wish them the best and I hope they take what I said here as constructive. Because of this, I can't recommend this subwoofer to my viewers when there are obviously much better alternatives for similar money. And that's my look inside video on the Aoyama 800X subwoofer. So long and happy listening.